Take it away. So, hi, uh, my name is KJ Hardrick. I'm a recent MIT grad who majored in aerospace engineering, and I focused a lot on autonomous systems. And I'm here representing Deuce Drone, a company that will transform the delivery system as we know it. So first, I'm going to get into the problem that Deuce Drone is trying to solve. The, the current issue for a lot of these retailers is that it's become almost impossible to compete with Amazon and how quickly they deliver packages. According to a Bloomberg study, 76, 77.6 million Americans live in a zip code where Amazon offers same day prime delivery. The reason Amazon is able to do this is because they can leverage a large delivery network for a lot of their different products. And last, because last mile delivery is costly and relies on people and for most businesses, it's just too expensive and inefficient to develop such a network. This is why they have to turn to other services to facilitate these deliveries. But by doing this, the retailers lose control of the last leg of delivery. They have no control over how deliveries uh, drivers dress or conduct themselves or interact with customers and any mishaps with the order will reflect negatively on the retailers and not on delivery services like Uber Eats or Grubhub. So our solution is that we're providing businesses that wouldn't have the resources to create a whole drone program even if they wanted to the ability to do so and offer same day, same hour delivery. We're providing an efficient and fully integrated automated delivery service that we will get more into detail. Like I'll get into more detail a little later throughout this presentation, but in essence, we're enabling drone delivery that will allow just about any retailer to offer delivery times in minutes and not days. And these retailers that are utilizing our service are already conveniently located fulfillment centers so if you think about it, Amazon has to have different hubs, maybe 100 miles apart to make sure that they have that reach. But each of these retailers, the more that we get on board, the more that we're able to utilize their already existing inventory, already existing infrastructure, and we'll be able to deliver from those places directly to these people's homes. And as a result, we can deliver these packages much more quickly. And the more retailers we get on board, the more drone hubs we will be able to put in place, which will ultimately allow us to further expand our network and our reach. And situations like the one we're in right now just show that we needed this contactless delivery service already in place. And for a service like this, um, the uses are uh, countless. And as we see from the different services that are out right now, customers are already more than willing to pay these delivery and service fees and tip, as we can see from these different delivery services that we're all used to people um, getting your food from. And with the current system, these delivery systems add 40 to 60% to every order. This is in the form of tips, service fees, delivery fees, and extra fees that the retailer has to pay to utilize the service. For larger retailers that have the name recognition and branding, they can get away with simply passing those extra fees over to the customers, where you'll see the list price on the app is probably 10 to 20% more expensive than what you'd see in store. But for smaller retailers, they just won't be able to compete with these larger retailers if they passed on these costs. So they have to often absorb these costs just to have a chance. And one thing to note is you don't ever have to tip a drone. So we see that there's a huge market opportunity um, because of all of the different items that we're able to deliver. And because of the COVID-19 situation, this just seems even more relevant than before. So we've considered the competitive landscape as there are several people in the drone space who recognize this as the future. Amazon is clearly on this list uh, to no surprise and shows that despite their large ground-based delivery network, drone and unmanned aerial systems facilitating delivery is the next wave. You might ask, how do we plan to compete with competitors such as Amazon who have those deep pockets for tech development and research? Well, Amazon has been working on Prime Air since 2016 and we think the holdup is because of the regulation hurdles. And internally, I'll get into more of this later, we are confident that we'll be able to get over these different regulation hurdles because we have the experience on board, on our team, that can candidly have these conversations with the FAA to push forward. And we've already began pushing forward the different regulation um, hurdles that we had seen previously, and we're already making those steps right now. And so as I mentioned, since we want to put out a service that any customer wants to sign up for now, we have really put together an incredible cast of individuals where we cover all the bases from logistics, aerospace, and construction to technology and engineering. As a team, we have the connections to create relationships with the biggest brands you know and love. 
who speak the language of the FAA and can work with them to efficiently handle any regulation issues for the future. And we have decades of experience of within the successful startup space. For the drone tech itself, we're constantly exposed to the latest and greatest drone and robotics tech and are confident we'll continue to develop a safe, reliable, and efficient system. And recently, we have already begun to expand the team to fill project management, mechanical engineering, and app development roles. And not pictured here, we also have a sensor experts and robotics engineers that have just signed up. So companies will be able to easily sign up. Our, they're able to easily sign up for our service. We're continually coordinating and planning the different work we need to do in order to turn their current warehouses or store areas into a drone port and equip them for drone delivery. We're handling both the front and back end in terms of software, and we're seamlessly integrating the ordering process into the current systems. We're the ones operating the systems from control centers, and we call this a drone command. And since we don't have to operate vehicles and pay drivers, we're able to provide our delivery services with significantly less service and delivery fees on the consumer side. And so a rundown of what the whole process would look like, the customer would place an order on our app. The package is then prepared in the retail space um, area in their existing warehouse area. It will be placed in a designated area and using our drone waiter system, the package will be brought to the roof and loaded into the correct terminal at our drone port. The, it would then use the GPS to go to the correct location and we will know exactly where to land because each customer that we will get on board will receive a landing mat and so we can precisely land at whatever location the consumer wants, whether it's in the front yard, backyard, or in any piece of land that they have that they want the drone to land in. And then it will be able to return to any drone port that we specify. And as I mentioned just now, the drone waiter system will be a system of conveyor belts and waiter like elevator systems to get the package from our designated area and automatically get it to the correct terminal on the roof. And so the last time someone touches a package will be the worker putting it on the designated area. And then the next person to touch that package will be the consumer that receives it on the other end. And a big plus for why we don't have to develop a drone that can go 100 miles that we are able to use existing technology and actually reach all these people is because as we get these different retailers on board, we ex already expand our drone port network. These are the retailers that we already have on board, signed up and using our system. And from here, we're already able to reach hundreds of thousands of people. And because the drone doesn't have to necessarily come back to the same drone port that it was took off from, we're able to increase their range capabilities because we can just go back and recharge at a different port that may be closer to this person's home. The drone that we're using right now is the Matrice 600 Pro. And the good pluses for this one is that it can go 40 miles per hour, which comes out to around two thirds mile a minute. So you can imagine a four mile flight will only take six minutes because the drone is flying as the crow flies. The battery lasts up to 38 minutes and this gives us a range of about eight to 16 miles. And we're always going to take, uh, get the benefit of the doubt and make sure that the drone never goes below 30%. And because the drone's capabilities are already so vast, we are able to, we're already thinking about many ways where we can apply this drone technology from pharmaceutical um, movement to um, B2B movement to the general um, B2C movement. And already today, I actually just came from a successful flight demo that we showed out here in Mobile, Alabama. We showed a multi-node delivery mission and was able to deliver from both Rouse's and Buffalo Wild Wings with some controlled environment. And we had successful precision landing, unlatching, and yeah, that's what I just came from now. As I've said before, we also pushed forward the FAA regulation requirements and we have three neighboring cities already on board for pushing this forward. So yeah, if you have any more questions, you can definitely let me know. Thanks, KJ. And a reminder to everyone, if you have questions, please put them in the chat. We've got a couple of questions already, KJ. So can yeah. you talk to us about what are the size and weight limitations on packages? So right now, the weight that we're having, like in the current drone that we're using can carry up to 12 pounds. 
but we're already talking with different drone manufacturers because we're not a drone manufacturing company. We already make the flight scripts and all of the precision landing stuff. So we're able to apply that to different drone tech. And so right now we're already fielding different drone manufacturers that can offer payloads of 50 pounds, 30 pounds, and just different um, variations of drone that we'll be able to utilize more efficiently. And in terms of size, um, I didn't even get pictured our new landing gear, but we're able to carry a pretty decently sized package. It's hard to show virtually right now, but um, it, you, you'll be surprised at how much this drone can carry already and the capabilities will only increase as the technology improves. Great. Uh, so another question is, drones are required to be piloted by licensed operators. How can you say that they're less expensive than normal delivery drivers? So right now, yes, we have, um, we need to have one pilot for every five drones. But as I mentioned before, we're pushing for different FAA certifications and we already have the certification pushed forward of the part 135 that gives its full airline type um, licensing and registration. This will enable us to have our drone command centers and yes, that person will be licensed, but we envision them being able to monitor 50, 100, even 200 drones from one command station, as long as we can prove our safety capabilities. Fantastic. And then you know, the next question was, can you talk a little bit more about the control center? So these control centers, um, we're still refining this software, this, and it um, enables us to keep track of all the different drones. We can work directly with the FAA and also give them that information. So that has helped also in our regulation process. And we're able to see where all these different drones are, help with different path, path planning with code, and also monitor different things. So if a drone's landing, that view will come directly up to the person um, in control of the drone command center, and they'll be able to make sure everything's going well. If anything were to go wrong, that will alert the person in charge as well, and we'll be able to control the drones manually take over if we ever need to. And so the drone command center, isn't necessarily needed for the tech to work because the tech is all automated, but we're putting that in place to be able to keep the system as safe as possible. Thanks, KJ. We have a bunch of uh, questions coming in, so we'll try and we'll try and roll through them, through them as quickly as we can. So, uh, how do you account for weather? So right now, something that current um, ADSB transponders that have to be on every aircraft those get weather data so we can actually see every six minutes weather data being updated if we think we can make the trip while avoiding a big storm we will maneuver around that but if not um, there are already drone manufacturers out right now that are releasing weatherproof drones and so we don't envision this uh, major setback of course we're not going to fly it in like a hurricane or a blizzard but for most conditions we're still confident that we'll be able to transport these packages I suspect in a hurricane or a blizzard, even a delivery driver might have trouble. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think you might have addressed this earlier, but we'll, well, I want to make sure we hit all the questions. How do you get around the FAI one pilot, one drone and up to 75 pounds max rule? So we're not up to 75 right now. As I mentioned, we have only 12 pounds underneath. The drone empty weighs about 25 pounds, so we only get to around 37. So under part 107 right now, we'll be able to already do our test flights and monitor them as they come down. Safety is a big aspect of what we're doing. So with these flights, we're definitely monitoring how they come down and um, just really analyzing what happens there. We anticipate probably early next year into mid next year, we'll get the full part 135 um, regulations settled away. And we already have someone internal for there as well, I forgot to mention. Great. We have a couple of people asking about how does the model work in heavily congested areas like uh, Manhattan, et cetera? Would it work? So honestly, we have been tailoring the technology to more suburban environments. That's why it's been great to test here in, in Mobile, Alabama. Um, because everything is so dense in other areas, it might not be as useful of a service, but here when it's, everything's a little more sprawled out, we're able to reach a lot more people. But this is only talking like Manhattan, maybe Chicago, but even cities like LA or Atlanta, we envision to really be able to utilize all these spaces. Um, 
skyscrapers do complicate things, but that's definitely a space that we do want to go to eventually. But right now we're focusing on more suburban to um, or sprawled or urban environments. Great. Um, another question was a big box retailers do not have roof access. How do you automate the rooftop? Uh, they believe this will cost a lot of money. So this is where someone on the board, um, Philip Burton, who's on our founding team as well, has all these retail connections. And so we're already having these conversations with um, Rouse's and Buffalo Wild Wings who are already on board. And um, we don't see this as an issue. We're also looking at different solution methods. Maybe we're cantilevering like a platform right off of the roof. And we're just going to try to make it as easy as possible. And so which different centers will retrofit something that works for that landlord and we understand that there'll be differences in different building codes and stuff like that perfect and we've got a ton of questions but unfortunately we're running out of time um kj i know you can answer you can type the answer to some of these questions in the q a also make sure we have them and and we can do our best to make sure everyone gets their questions answered uh after okay. the event is over um so with that kj really appreciate your time and uh best of luck Perfect. And I appreciate all the attendees today. Uh, as I mentioned, there is uh, in the chat, there are links to each company's offering page on Net Capital where you can find more information, including uh, their offering statement and downloading a pitch deck. That's also where you can make an investment if you're interested. We will send a follow up email to everybody uh, with the rec this recording and some additional information on the companies. Uh, and again, if anyone has additional questions, please feel free to post them on the discussion board of the company's page. Uh, ben, uh, Jason, Kareen, any final thoughts before we sign off? Well, this has been a grand event. Let's do it again. When are we going to do it? Put on the calendar here, Ben, as soon as we can. We're ready when you are, Ben. All right. Good answer. And, and thank you everybody for your engagement. I thought the questions from, um, from everybody were fantastic and were the right questions to the right people. So thank you for your participation. And if you have any challenges with navigating net capital, if you wanna have further conversations with any of the entrepreneurs or the management team, um, or if you just feel like you need some help, you can email help at netcapital.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible with an investor relations expert who can help navigate the site with you or answer any questions you have with respect to um, getting your information in, setting up your account, or making the investment. Any final thoughts? You're welcome to throw them in the ring. Otherwise, uh, we, this is a great event. And we appreciate everyone being here. Okay. And thanks, Rob, for hosting. You did a fantastic job. Yeah, thanks, Rob.